We come to another very, very important session, session six, the piece of 45, the case study and consequences of the piece of 45 for Poland and the Baltic states. Moderator will be Dr. Heather Coleman of the University of Alberta, the speakers, two very important speakers, uh, Minister Janusz Moniszkiewicz and Pan Marius Bawraninkis. Um, and uh, with this, I would ask Dr. Coleman to take the uh, dais. Hello. Well, I'm going to echo Yars Balan as a, a local and uh, welcome you all to Edmonton. And of course, we did put in a word with the good Lord, and uh, that's why it's sunny and you're stuck inside. Um, so I'm Heather Coleman. I'm a historian here uh, of Ukraine and Russia, and I'm the director of the Religion and, Study and Culture Program at the CIUS. And uh, so it's, I, we will get going without any further ado. Um, uh, we'll go in the order in the program. So. The first, uh, first, I'd like to welcome uh, Janusz Onishkiewicz uh, to the podium. Thanks. Well, thank you, first of all, for, for inviting me. I'm going to talk about Kaliningrad. Kaliningrad is this tiny piece which you could see there. It is not as tiny as it may look from this map because it has about 15,000 square kilometers and there is about one million people living there. Uh, obviously not all are Russians, there are a quite large number of Ukrainians and Belarusians living there. But how it happened that such a strange entity sort of actually you know, came into being? Well, we should go back to history. The whole area was this northern part was inhabited by uh, several tribes with which are collectively named Prussians. They belong to the Baltic group of, 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 of the tribes who later formed Lithuania and, and Latvia. Well, this group actually was fairly difficult for neighbors. They were pagans, they were raiding Poland very often. So one of Polish princes invited the Teutonic order to come and to secure the border and to Christianize you know, this pagan tribe. Uh, well, that happened in the 13th century. Teutonic knights were simply out of, out, out of mission because Holy Land already was taken back by, by Arabs uh, and, uh, and Muslims, so they were really looking for some place to go, and it was a golden opportunity for them to go to Poland, and finally they set up their own state. This state existed for some time, but later that this state became a Polish fief. And this is, this is the... The, the, the map from the 16th century, this area eastern, known as Eastern Prussia was a Polish fief. It didn't last very long. Uh, 200 years later, it became completely independent. And finally, uh, it f became a part uh, of, uh, of German, German Prussia. But this part was always known as Eastern, Eastern Prussia. So that was the situation which finally we have in, uh, at, at the, uh, uh, in 1939. You can see that this Eastern Prussia is, uh, is part of Germany. Uh, in, 19, in 1939, that was more or less the situation. Uh, well, so this was the, the 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 Eastern Prussia, but as the result of the of the Second World War, uh, situation has changed. Well, how it happened? How it happened in you know first when there was a debate during the Second World War about settlement resulting from the uh, assumed victory. 
was the first moment when the whole issue was raised was when uh, Eden went to Moscow. That was in December of 1941. And at that time, among other uh, goals for Russia, for Russia, Stalin demanded incorporation of only a piece of northern territories, north of north of river uh, Niemen, together with Tilsit, to Lithuania. He was not interested in anything else. Uh, but in Tehran, situation was changed. At the beginning, Stalin did not raise any uh, claims, but at the very end, he decided to ask for part of Eastern Prussia to be to, to, to be incorporated to the yeah. Soviet Union. At the beginning, he claimed that it will be incorporated to Lithuania. But nevertheless, he insisted that he must have this bit of, of, of territory because, as he said, uh, uh, first of all, Eastern Prussia should be separated from Germany, and then he needed a port. And which, is, which will not be freezing. Finally, Stalin simply said that he wants also this piece of territory, as he put it, to sit on the neck of Germans. Well, how it was supposed to work, because Germany was very far from this area, that was something uh, obviously rather curious, but nevertheless he insisted that that's what should be done. But in fact, obviously, it was not that he wanted to sit on the neck of Germans. He wanted to sit on the neck of Poland. Well, that was and probably Lithuanians. And this is how the whole situation developed. This is this region. As you can see, this is a region which simply has very artificial borders. One border is here which cuts a, a certain peninsula spit uh, and blocks the entry to the, to the open sea uh, of certain Polish ports. The same thing is, is there. Uh, the whole uh, region was after the, 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 the Second World War, finally not given to Lithuania, but it was simply divided. Lithuania got only a little piece up there and the rest was a part of Russian Federation, of Russian, of Russian Republic. So what was the role of this, of, of this area? It was very important, it was very important military outpost for Russia. Obviously the first line was in Germany, in East Germany, in Poland, but Kaliningrad was in the second line well, the second echelon uh, of, of troops uh, was, was actually uh, uh, there. It was about 100,000 troops there. The whole area was absolutely closed. Nobody really could enter. Uh, and the role of the area was more or less this. Russian fleet, Black Sea fleet, was supposed to assist of Polish Navy and Polish troops to capture Denmark and Danish Straits. These were more or less the, the war plans of, of Russia. But obviously, situation has changed dramatically when the, 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 the Soviet Union collapsed and uh, this enclave became a real enclave or rather exclave from the point of view of Russians. Because this part was separated from this part was separated from Russia uh, by Lithuania and Poland. Both countries were members of NATO and later, uh, later on became members of, of European Union. But nevertheless, from the military point of view, it was something extremely important for Russia. Uh, why it is so important for Russia militarily? First, there is obviously a Baltic fleet stationing there. The main bulk of Baltic fleet is there. 
clearly this fleet can, in case of some military conflict, can try to disrupt the shipping in the Baltics, shipping between the NATO and European Union states, could also protect and should protect the pipelines which were laid down uh, on, 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 on the Baltic seabed. The presence, military presence in this area is not that much terrific because there are only three brigades, a part of the fleet. But, but this area is a tremendous storage of weapons. In this area, as a result of the withdrawal from, uh, East, from Germany, that there is 800 tanks, more than 800 tanks. Just to tell you, what, to give you a certain sense of perspective, 800 tanks is more tanks that United Kingdom, France, Germany, Netherlands, and Belgians have together. Uh, well, fortunately, we have more. <laughs> but, but this is the very strange situation uh, because it also indicates a certain level of, of, of I would say, uh, of decreasing of military capabilities in Western, in, in Western Europe. What else is there? In, also in this area, Russians put up a very strong air defense. Well, air defense system clearly is rather of a defensive nature, but nevertheless, the systems they deploy, they deploy there could cover most of the airspace uh, of the airspace in Poland they, because of the of, of the range of these systems. And on top of that, they have very sophisticated ballistic missile systems there. Uh, besides, rather older versions of ballistic missiles like Tochka with the range of 90 to 120 kilometers, they have now. They are very modern Iskander missiles with the range of 500 kilometers. Well, 500 kilometers is as far as Berlin and covers whole Poland. And obviously, all these missiles have nuclear ca ca capacity. They can carry nuclear warheads. Are nuclear warheads stored in Kaliningrad? Nobody really knows. Russians claim that there are not. But even if there are not, it is very easy to bring them in. So this is more or less the situation we, 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 we have now at present. So what is the problem with this, uh, with this capacity, with this military presence in, in Kaliningrad? The problem is not so much that this Kaliningrad could be a springboard of a major land operation, because this is too small. Uh, uh, but nevertheless, what it really could be a problem, what problem it could create, is in in a, in a case when Baltic states would be somehow threatened. Because if Baltic states would be threatened, the capacity which is accumulated in Kaliningrad could actually create a situation in which access to Baltic states would be very, very difficult because they can try to disrupt the sea lines, transportation lines to the, to the Baltic states. That's one thing. And the second thing is that they can rather easily block land entry. And now in the debates among the military people in NATO, uh, there is certain repetition of the terminology which was very much commonly known uh, during the Cold War, that there was a term Fulda Gap. Fulda Gap was, Fulda was a small locality in West Germany, and, and it was seen as probably a place where the main thrust of Warsaw Pact uh, attack would take place, because it was, from geographical point of view, the easiest sort of place to break through the defensive line and go and reach Frankfurt on Main and other very vital areas in Germany. So now uh, in, uh, in NATO debates, there is often uh, another term used, Svalki Gape. Okay. Svalki is small locality there because the whole 
reinforcement to the Baltic states should go there. And clearly, it is rather difficult again thing to do, not only because the of the Kaliningrad, but also because of Belarus. Belarus, despite of its constitutional neutrality, uh, this is again a very strange thing to remind you, because Belarus, according to constitution, should be a neutral state, but obviously it is a farce. Belarus is part of the of, of, of the of, of the Russian Federation military establishment, so it would this passage would be somehow sandwiched between these two these two uh, areas, Kaliningrad on one side and Belarus on on the other side. So situation is really militarily very difficult, and what really Stalin prophetically uh, thought that he would sit on Polish neck, having this Kaliningrad region, and would sit on Lithuanian neck, actually materialized. Uh, is that really so, that the whole Kaliningrad area is the only problem from the military point of view? Not exactly. Kaliningrad also is an area which can actually be a certain chance in case Russia would change its policy and would try to somehow accommodate its relations with the European Union. When the situation was not as tense as it is now as the result of Russian aggression on Georgia first and then on Ukraine, uh, Kaliningrad was seen as a potential pilot scheme for cooperation with the European Union. And oh, there are good reasons to, to believe that it could be done it could, it could be so, but at the same time, it is rather a problem of certain concern on side of Russian authorities. Because at some stage, it looked like there are some growing separatist tendencies in Kaliningrad. Now it looks like they are no longer seen, but nevertheless, people living in Kaliningrad consider themselves being somehow different than Russians somehow different because they are much more exposed to European situation, to European values. They now can easily travel to northern Poland because there is this ag agreement on s small traffic, cross-border traffic, uh, covering whole Kaliningrad region and on Polish side covering also quite a big chunk of Poland. Uh, they also have some de developed certain uh, skills. If you look at the, at, the, at the business situation in Kaliningrad, you will see that not unlike in, in Russia proper, there are a much greater percentage of small and medium-sized companies and enterprises. There are much more NGOs uh, in Kaliningrad. Uh, and finally, if you look at the results of the elections, Putin and the ruling party is getting much lesser support in Kaliningrad than in other parts of, of Russia. That's why Russia is rather worried that at some stage, you know, the, the separatist tendencies can actually be revived. Uh, and as a result, Russia may simply lose Kaliningrad and Kaliningrad may become the fourth Baltic state. Well, that's something obviously very difficult to predict, but it can, one cannot exclude this scenario, which probably would solve many problems. Thank you.